Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode I'm going to be showing you how to take advantage of Premiere's uh, animation functionality in order to create what's called the Ken Burns, it's commonly come to be known as the Ken Burns effect. It's basically a technique to uh, add a little bit of motion to still images if you're importing still images. So I've got like a few still images here placed on my timeline. I'm just playing through them with dissolves. I've got five second clips with dissolves on them. And uh, these ones haven't been scaled to fit or anything like that, but they're they're just kind of sitting there. They're static photos, and uh, they might be good photos. I don't know, but they're just like sitting there kind of doing nothing. So instead of this, you're going to have this sort of effect. Let me play down here. I've done a little bit of the effect here where you've got uh, pan artificial pans and tilts and zooms uh, on, on the actual image to create kind of this feeling that somebody's like moving a tripod across a, a uh, instead of a still image, now it looks a little bit more video-ish. It makes it a little bit more interesting uh, to watch. And that comes from basically uh, early on uh, uh, Ken Burns documentaries where they were actually zooming up. They, have, they used to zoom up on the on actual pictures with uh, with servo, servo motors on, on actual uh, film lenses and whatnot. So... And now we're doing it electronically, digitally, so to kind of get the create the same effect. But let's show how to do that. And oftentimes that starts with the way you import your pictures. Uh, so you just import the pictures pretty direct. But let's show you one quick thing here. I'm going to go into Edit and Preferences, and then I'm going to go under Timeline here. And under Timeline, you'll see under these settings here, you have a still image default duration is set by uh, by default it is set at five seconds. If you want to import when you import a bunch of pictures and you want them to last a little bit longer than five seconds you might want to add maybe like eight to ten seconds depending on how long you think those uh, still images may stay out on screen for but I'm going to change that to 10 right now and I'm gonna hit okay now when I import photos they will have a running duration of 10 seconds 10 seconds you can trim them shorter or longer if you wish uh, but that that's that'll save you some time if you know about how long you want those photos to be I'm going to do control I to import and I'm going to grab a bunch of my photos and choose a range of photos here and I'm going to hit open and it will import my photos just for basic organization, I'm going to grab these and put them into a folder. I'm just going to call them photos. And then you can put like a date on them or whatever else you want. So, all right, so those have been imported. Now I'm going to create a sequence. You don't want to drag a photo and drop it here to create a sequence because it will base it on the fo on the photograph's resolution so, and aspect ratio as well. I'm going to do new item and go to new sequence. And here I'm just going to create a DSLR 1920 by 1080 timeline here. 30 frames per second is fine for this. I'm doing it for broadcast. Hit OK, and there is my timeline. I'm going to change this to, I'm going to call it photo montage. OK, so I'm going to choose which photos I want in here. I'm going to double click on my photos, and I'm going to show this by icon. So I kind of look at these by icon. And I'm going to tilt it over this, make it bigger. I'm going to arrow this down and tell it to sort by, by list view sort. If I do that, it reads my, my list view. If it's in alphabetical order, it'll organize these in alphabetical order. So now I've got all these photos. Let's grab, I'm going to grab some of these mountain ones. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab all these photos of outside here. And, and I'm going to drag them in here. I'm going to drag and drop them in. And there we go. Now one thing that you'll notice is that these clips are 10 seconds each. And another thing you'll notice is uh, these photos seem to have been like zoomed up r really far on these photos. I'm going to click on this, go up to my effect controls and grab scale and scale this down. You'll see, yeah, that photo has been zoomed way up. And the reason why is because this photo, if you go down here and look at these photos down here, these ones are 5K. These are uh, quite large photos and this is uh, uh, close to 2K. So this is where I got, got 3,000 3, more horizontal pixels than that my timeline has, which is good because I'm going to want some uh, ability to zoom up on the photos a little bit as I do the animation. So what I'm going to do here is there, there's a couple things you can do. Uh, first of all, I'm going to do is Control A to select all. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to Scale to Frame Size. Scale to Frame Size is going to make all these clips zoom down until they fit into your window size here. Now everything's zoomed down, it's, it's scaled these things down, and now we can start working with these things. So first of all, I, I know I'm going to want dissolves from beginning to end on all these. So especially when you start doing your animation, you probably want to do your dissolves first. So the dissolve, because the dissolve will lengthen the clip a little bit as it dissolves into another clip. So I can just hit Control A and hit Control D, and it will paste all those on there. And uh, but this is my default duration right here. These cross dissolves. Let me do Shift Plus and increase the track height here. Uh, these things are by default one second long. If I double click on one of these cross dissolves, it brings it up and says this is one second long. If you want longer dissolves, here's a way you can do that. 
I'm going to hit undo and get rid of all those dissolves. I'm going to go to the beginning of my clip and do control D, dissolve in, arrow down and control D to dissolve here. Let's make this one, let's say I want to make this one um, like three seconds. I want these nice slow dissolves. So I'm going to arrow back, type in three seconds, hit enter, and it has now made that cross dissolve. Um, three seconds. Now to copy and paste this onto the rest of your edits, all you have to do is select the cross dissolve, do control C to copy, hit the tilde, I'm going to look at my um, my whole timeline here, and you have, and this time I'm not going to select them like this, because if I, if I, and if I paste it just will not work. So what you got to do is you got to select the edit points. And the way you can do that is choose your roll edit tool, and that's the letter N, it chooses this roll edit tool right here, and I'm going to select all these edits, and now I can do control V and paste and it will paste the cross dissolve the same length on all these edits here, all these edit points. See, I can even do it right here because that one is too short, so I'm going to kill that one. Hit N for my edit, roll edit, and select that edit and do Control V and paste, and it just pasted the same duration on the beginning as well. So now that fades in with a three second fade in, and there we go. And after 10 seconds, this one will start, will fade to the next picture. And before we get started on the animation here, another thing you got to be a little concerned about is as we get into some of these photos here, as we move along, get into the, some of these photos here, you'll notice these photos are portrait and not landscape. They're kind of tall. The phone was rotated to the side. Uh, so you want to be aware of, of, of these these types of photos. If When you're taking pictures, you might want to try to take that. If you're going to be putting them into a video format, you might want to do them all uh, landscape instead of portrait. Uh, then you won't have this uh, pillar boxing on the side. So I've got this clip selected. And actually what we can do, we've got enough resolution that I can actually select this clip and I'm going to go up to my scale and I'm going to zoom that up there and make it fill in uh, the image there. And we're going to do a little bit of an animation on this, maybe a tilt to reveal the top of the screen here. Okay, with that, let's get started here. I'm going to start doing a little bit of uh, movement on these clips here. I'm going to select one of my clips here. And let's say maybe the beginning we want to kind of like zoom up a little bit. Or let's have it starting out a little bit closer on this guy. And as it zooms out, it reveals the wall right here. I'm going to select the clip. I'm going to zoom up a little bit, plus, plus, plus. And this one maybe we want a little bit longer. I'm going to hit B for my ripple tool. I'm going to grab the end edit here and drag it to the right. And I just extended that uh, by a couple seconds there. All right, so with this selected, I'm going to go up to my effect controls area. I'm going to make a little bit more room for my keyframes here. And I'm going to add a keyframe on. And I moved in a little bit here. I don't want the animation to start here, but I'm going to just get it past the dissolve and go turn on my position, turn on my scale, just move it a couple seconds. And I'm going to add two keyframes right there on position and scale. So what I want to do is say, go back to my beginning keyframes and say where do I want this to start and go to these keyframes and say where do I want them to end. So I'm going to land on the beginning keyframes because actually the second ones are exactly where I want them so I'm going to leave those alone. I want it to end on wide so these ones I want them closer up. And now I'm going to do scale here. Let's just go to about maybe 160% and now I'm going to tilt this up just so that doesn't cut the picture off on the bottom of the frame ray there and there it goes. Now if I play through this this is going to be kind of a quick move. It's a little too fast there, but I can actually grab these keyframes and I can spread them out a little bit to make this last longer. And I'm going to grab this to the beginning, drop that right at the beginning right there, and I'm going to grab these two keyframes and say temporal interpolation, ease in. It'll ease into both the position and the scale. Let's watch through that, see how it goes. And that's looking pretty good. And then it eases into it, gradually comes to a stop. And I like that. And then it dissolves to the next shot. Now, as we move to the next shot, let's try something else here. But And by the way, right here, as I said, we've got this clip selected. You'll notice this gets a little darker gray right here. This is where the edit actually is. But the dissolve actually extends this clip by this much time over into this area right there. And once again, if you want these uh, animations to happen faster, you can drag the keyframes closer together. And now it will play back a lot. Now it will do the move a lot faster. And see, I actually kind of like that speed a little bit more there as it stops. So what I could do is grab my ripple edit and grab this, drag it to the right, and then it'll end the animation, and then we'll do the dissolve. Okay, so let's do it on this thing here. Let's do a zoom on, on this one here. So I'm going to just hit scale and scale and add a keyframe right there, and we've got two keyframes. I'm going to go to the beginning. I'm going to zoom this up a little bit, maybe right there. And uh, now it's going to go from here. So there, it's kind of a fast move. So what I can do is just grab this, and I'm going to add it and drag it all the way to the end of the dissolve there. So it goes all the way through the dissolve on both of these points here. And let's see how that looks. Let's go back before it and play into it. Now watch as it plays into it, it's already zooming as it comes into the dissolve. Now 
And there you go, and I like that. Okay, as we move on down the line here, here's one that was a panoramic shot. Some panoramic shots work really, really well with the Ken Burns effect. What I'm going to do is select the clip, and I'm going to set my zoom first. I'm going to just zoom this up till it takes up the top to the bottom frame. It doesn't have any of those letter boxes on it there, and now that they're gone. And now I'm going to zoom up a bit. I'm going to move up here. I'm going to set two positions, two position keyframes here. And I'm going to go to the beginning and say, where do I want this to start? I'm going to move this over here a little bit, and where do I want this to end? Maybe a little bit over to the right there. So now as it plays through, that's a pretty quick pan there. So once again, we can take these out to the extremes. Drag them across. And play into it. And there we go. That panorama looks nice. we got a nice steady pan going across it. And let's do the same to this clip right here. We'll do a tilt. We'll do a tilt from the top to this person down at the bottom. And let's do it a little bit faster here. So what I'm going to do, like it's kind of like a whip. It'll be kind of like a whip tilt really quick. It'll kind of tilt down quickly. Let's see how that looks. So I'm going to, first of all, scale it so it fits so it doesn't uh, pillar box on the side. And the pillar box are those black bars you have on the side. And that's the scale that, that fits, it, fits it perfectly there. So I'm going to grab my vertical position and I'm going to drag this down so we're looking at the top here. And I'm going to leave that on there for a second. I'm going to need some space on this clip. I'm going to hit B for my ripple tool and ripple this out a little bit so I've got a lot, lot of space to play with. Because I want it to fade into that clip there. Because I want it to fade into this shot here. And once it's faded in, then I want it to perform the move. So right about there, now I want it to start the move. So let's do position. And I'm going to play into this a little bit, and I'm going to, um, and if I don't have to add a keyframe, if you just start moving, because this one's already been set, so as I start moving, look what it does. It automatically sets a keyframe for you. I'm going to grab this and just drag it down until I get to the person at the bottom. And there we go. There's the person at the bottom. So this is going to go pretty quick. Watch this. Zips down pretty quick. Now another person looks a little artificial, so I'm going to spread out that timing a little bit. Maybe about right there. And I'm going to, what I want to do is ease out of this keyframe. I'm going to go temporal interpolation and ease out of it. And then we go into this one and ease in. So it kind of slows up and comes to a stop on temporal interpolation, ease in. Let's see how that looks. So it does the dissolve. And it gradually moves into it. It looks nice. Looks like somebody's operating a tripod there. And it tilts down the spire. to reveal the person, and look how it slows down as it comes to an end there. Nice and smooth. Now I can cut off the rest of this just by hitting the letter W. It cuts off everything to the right. Let's go Shift 3 to jump to my timeline. Hit W, cleans up the rest of that. So now, after it finishes the move, it starts to dissolve. And that's it for the Ken Burns effect. And basically what you want to do is just have kind of these smooth smooth move pans and tilts across images to add a little bit more uh, dynamics to your shot than just dissolving between stills. And one thing that I should also mention is you got to kind of watch your resolution as well. You can select the images that you're looking at and see what resolution your pictures are at. And when you uh, are working in a, like a 1920 by 1080 environment and you're using something that's Virtually, that's virtually 5K. You're going to be able to at least double your zoom, double the double the scale on the images before you start really losing, uh, before you re really start losing visual quality. If you zoom up too close, watch this as we grab a clip here and we zoom up too close. Eventually, your image starts looking uh, like garbage and it starts breaking down. So you just kind of have to watch uh, the the amount that you zoom. Well, that's it for the Ken Burns effect and kind of some uh, pointers on importing still images and doing dissolves between them. If you have any questions, please post them, and thanks for watching.